Welcome back to the Fujo China Open. Second round action today. Here in Fujo, the capital of Fujian province on the east coast of China. Well, after the disappointment of that uh, men's singles, we will be turning our attention to men's doubles. And it's more number three seats because it will be the former world champions, last year's world champions, Li Jun Kui and Liu Yu Chen, up against Lu Qing Yao and the left-handed Yang Po Han of Chinese Taipei. After that, it will be more men in singles with Sai Pranith against Anna Zantonson, that's the world championship bronze medalist against the world championship silver medalist. And then we will be finishing with mixed doubles and the quarter-finalists from the World Championships, Tarbalin and Peak, up against the Olympic silver medalists, Chan and Gold from Malaysia. So disappointment in that last match that the match didn't conclude, uh, but we have plenty more to look forward to, as we've just seen. And with regard to the men's doubles, <coughs> this match is from the top half of the draw and if you were with us a little earlier you will have seen the three-time defending champions Marcus van Alvey Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio come through three games in a repeat of last year's final against Herji Ting and Tang Chiang. Well, as far as the men's doubles draw is concerned, apart from the three-time defending champions, only one other player in the draw from the start of the tournament who had won this title before, and that was Hendra Setiawan, who's current world champion with Mohamed Hassan. Now, they're the number two seeds in the men's doubles draw. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we have a bit of a, a lull while the uh, players for the men's doubles make their final preparations for coming on to court. We lost uh, one seeded pair in the men's doubles in the very first round, and that was Kim Astrup and Anas Rasmussen, the only seeded uh, casualties. And as far as men's doubles is concerned, well, Steen, you were calling the match with Gideon and Sulkamolio a little earlier, and they have won seven of the 13 Super 500 and above tournaments so far this year. That's 54%. To say they've been dominant is, is absolutely extraordinary. And I know there's a lot of debate about the fact we now have two China Opens and which China Open stats we should yeah. follow. Uh, but uh, Gideon and Sukumolio have won in Fuzhou for the last three years. I think we have to count. If they were to win it again, and they're a long way off that at the moment, then uh, they win four consecutive. They've never lost a match in this arena. They've never lost a match in this arena, absolutely. Together. Together, absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, yeah it, it really is incredible. I have to say that in the women's doubles, we've had a bit of a contrast, haven't we? Because if you look at the uh, Super 500 and above tournaments, if you look actually just at the Super 500 and the Super 750, 750s, this is the fifth one we've had. The four previous, four different women's doubles pairs have won. We've had six Super fi uh, 500 events of the seven. Those six Super 500s, we've had six different winners. Wow. So that's quite amazing. We've had one pair win two of the Super 1000. That, of course, was Chen Ching Cheng and Jia Yi Fan. But when you look at the overall 500 and above, of course, some of those play pairs that won at 750 level in the women's doubles and 500 have won in both categories. But it is quite extraordinary that we've had so many different pairs, at these different levels of tournament and in the think, women's doubles. I think also the, uh, the pool of possible winners have increased in women's doubles. We've seen the Koreans, especially within the last year, uh, making a charge um, and in one of the previous matches the world champions the double world champions they've played korean pairs 12 times this year only won four yeah. matches so the koreans have definitely made their um, 
a comeback to the women's double scene the way I see it. Yeah. And of course, China also uh, gunning for it uh, with the clear number one pair in Chen and, and Jia, but also Du and Li uh, becoming stronger and stronger. I thought they lost earlier today. To a compatriots Li Wenmei and uh, yeah. Zhang Yu. But just to emphasize your point in the women's doubles about the Koreans making a comeback, the last three Super 500 or above tournaments, Korean pairs have won. Three different yeah. Korean pairs have won in the women's doubles, which is quite extraordinary. But on the race to Guangzhou, there's only one Korean pair at the moment. But if we look at the fact that you're only allowed to have two qualifiers per discipline, per nation, in Guangzhou, then we're likely uh, to have the current number 11 pair on that race to Guangzhou, uh, Li Sohi and Xin Siang Chan, who of course won the last of the uh, Super 750 tournaments in Paris just a couple of weeks ago. They're likely to qualify as well. But as we've got men's doubles coming up next, let's just uh, talk a little bit more about the men's doubles and the race to Guangzhou because in the top 10, we've got three Indonesian pairs. Until last week or a couple of weeks ago after the French Open, we had three Indonesian pairs in the top four. Now we've got three Indonesian pairs in the top six. But one of those pairs won't go. No. And the way I see it, it's, it's certain that it's uh, our fellow Narianto who, who won't go. Mm. Because we have the world champions. They're qualified by merit. That's yep. San and Setiawan. So uh, you would have to deselect the uh, Sukumulio and uh, and uh, Gideon. I mean, could you do that just to give the other the match practice? <laughs> and uh, you know that they're still good, uh, Gideon and Sukumulio. I don't think that's um, that's yeah. a, a possibility. So they're definitely going to go. Yeah. Well, you look at the uh, the top ten in mean, the men's doubles on the race to Guangzhou. As we've said, three Indonesian pairs two from Japan, two from Chinese Taipei, two from Malaysia, which means that the pair we're about to watch, the former world champions, Li Chun Kuei and Li Yu Chen, is, you think of China being so strong over the years, the only pair from China in that, in that top 10. But even more extraordinary, if we count the China Open, first in that, or for the last few years, in Fuzhou, before that it was in Shanghai. Shanghai. Since this China Open came into the Super Series, we have not had men's doubles champions at this event from China. That's extraordinary. That's the high time of Fu Haifeng and Chaiyun. Absolutely. In fact, you have to go back 18 years for the last time a home pair won the men's doubles at this China Open, and that was Zhang Jun, who's now the head men's doubles coach, and Zhang Wei, who beat Liu Yong, former mixed doubles world champion, and Chen Qingchu, who's now the doubles coach. The doubles coach. So, I mean, it's a long, long time, but quite frankly, whether this men's doubles pair, I think the pair we're about to watch, Li Jun Hui and Li Yu Chen, have been a bit erratic this year. What's your feelings? Yeah, they have. They've, they've been very inconsistent, but I'm thinking about when the coaches are sort of like sabotaging the other pairs here in China Open so they can keep the record as the latest <laughs> Chinese <laughs> winner here. <laughs> That's a possibility I think should be examined. <laughs> as always, Steve, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so the players, as you can see, are on board service, service, now, service. ready for this service. men's doubles yeah. encounter. It'll be a ninth meeting between these two pairs, and the pair from Chinese Taipei won the first encounter and won the last encounter. The last encounter was in the quarterfinal of the Denmark 750 event, when won through in three games, and that for Lu Chin Yao and Yang Po Han meant that they reached their first ever semi-final at a Super 750 event. So that was a big milestone for this pair from Chinese Taipei in Onza. So as we look at the uh, players, we're going to look first of all at this man. He's the taller of the two 
players from Chinese Taipei, Lu Ching Yao, 26 years of age, born in Kaohsiung. He's 1 meter 90, which is just under 6 foot 3. He and his partner have played 29 ranking tournaments in the last 12 months. They're currently ranked 17 in the world, but they have been as high as 10. Well, his partner, the left-hander, Yang Pohan, is 25 years of age. I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to see the left-hander, but at the moment, in the background, we can see Li Jun Hui, the tallest man on court at 1 meter 95. That's six foot five. He is 24 years of age, as indeed is his partner, Li Yu Chen. They're currently number three on the world ranking, having been number one in the world for a total of 10 weeks across three different spells. So there is Li Jun Hui. He and his partner were semi-finalists here two years ago, lost out to Gideon and Sukumolio. They went on to win the title, as we've just been discussing, because they've won it on the last three occasions. And it seems like we might actually have a problem with one of our cameras, because it seems that we can't see either of the players from the far end of the court who were warming up. I can quickly tell you, Yang Pohan, 25, he was born in Taipei City. Liu Yu Chen, who uh, plays with Li Junhui, was born in Beijing. So I hope we're going to be able to see the match from more than just this camera angle. I can also tell you that our umpire for, our, for this one is from Bangladesh, Mohammed Shamin Hassan Saikat and Chu Su Yun from China is the service judge. It will be sort of a quiz match so that people can guess what they're playing <laughs> on the right side of the court that we can't <laughs> see. Now we'll have to give a radio commentary. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there is young Paul Han. Great character. Ladies and gentlemen. On my right. So it's the unseeded pair of Lu Ching Yao and Yang Po Han. Hey! It's this match underway. to all our viewers. We've obviously got major technical issues.
So, I understand from the technical side of things that, in fact, Steen and I have pictures on our monitor, that's, or on our two monitors, that are totally different to the pictures that you're seeing at home. So, that's probably why nothing really made sense earlier on when I was saying... So, the quiz is off. <laughs> the quiz is off. <laughs> yeah, we'll take them from... Ching Yao. So Steen and I will just watch the court rather than watch our monitors. Ah, oh, here we go. Out. Our monitors and our back on. Three, six. Attacking play. Seven silver, seven three. Steen, I know you were in Ordenza for a couple of days with us. In fact, I don't think this match was on the television court when these two pairs no, played against. No, I didn't, I didn't see it. Did you, so you didn't manage to catch anything no. of the match? No, me neither. There's no point me asking what tactics they use then. <laughs> no, but it's interesting that they've played so many tournaments, but they're actually getting better from it. I think yeah. they're in really good shape now, perhaps the best form they've been in ever. Lu Ching Yao and um, and Yang Kuo Han. But it was the, the conditions in Odin's that they, it was um, reasonably fast shuttles and there was uh, drift. So a lot like the conditions here because we must say that the playing conditions have been fast here. Even though we talked to some of the players and coaches yesterday to get information on um, on the playing conditions for the first two days, the first round matches, and they said it was slow playing conditions. I don't agree. I think Nine. today has been Five. extremely fast playing conditions. All right.
Oh, my goodness. Well, I think Lu Ching Yao was expecting his partner to intercept that one. Well, it is the unseeded combination, Lu Ching Yao and Yang Po Han, that has the advantage at the mid game interval. Four point advantage. And to emphasize the point about the amount of badminton these two have been playing. Denmark, France, Macau. <laughs> but as you say, they are playing better and better. And that's the challenge for most of the players, figuring out what works for me. Yeah. Some would struggle playing three tournaments in a row, right. whilst others, they thrive from it and um, really get their game going. I think it's important to mix it up so that, um, that you play some tournaments where you are not winning, not playing in the weekend because otherwise you can't make it from Denmark to Macau. Yeah. And, and others where you really um, uh, play and get some self-confidence. So, uh, of course, it's no problem if you're one of the better players, but, but you really have to consider the scheduling if you're in the middle group or sort of the challenging group in, mm. in your category. bit um, outside the picture young boy hang here <laughs> must be really annoying for his opponents to watch hey. Nine, eleven. Maybe stretching stretching his back Good placement of that interception there. Yeah, he's, he's like the odd player. The three others, they are very much alike. Mm. Uh, all three tall players, good power, oh. whilst Yang Pohan is the uh, hey. unpredictable left hander.
Excellent uh, work by Liu Chen. Service error. Unsighted. Oh, well, the umpire is saying he was unsighted, but I think all four players realise that it was short of the mark. We don't have a line judge on those front service lines, so the umpire needs to make the call. But I don't think there was any question of that, was there, Steve? I must admit, I wasn't really paying enough attention. <laughs> I need Hawkeye as well. No, it was way too short. Way short. Out. Yeah. Service over. Sporting, third in. Defensive orientated uh, Yang Puhan and Lu uh, Ching Yao, especially not when they change ends after the first game here. The attack will feel much sharper when Li and Liu plays the near side of the court. Well, before play resumes, I actually need to correct myself, Steen, because this is actually or the pair from Chinese Taipei, their ninth tournament in 10 weeks since the Chinese Taipei Super 300. And prior to that, they only had a week off after finishing the World Championships. Yeah. It's their job. Yeah. yeah. And they're one of the two Chinese pairs that are um, predicted to qualify for the uh, World Tour Finals. Chinese Taipei pairs, yeah. 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 Well, ever since the mid-game interval, the former world champions have been pretty dominant, haven't they? close they stand to uh, the service line the two tall Chinese players
Should have left that one, Liu Chen. Hanbin and Chen Chi Chu, two Chinese coaches. Mm. I think that proves your point, Steen. That was the reason why they were standing so close to the service line, the two tall Chinese. You know that it's difficult to lift with accuracy. forward and he did that with a broken string out. now they're still within striking distance mm. I mean well when they beat them in Denmark they lost the opening game in Unza, this pair from Taipei Pirouette in the middle of that rally did uh, young Pohan. And now it all gets a bit nervy, doesn't it? Believe it. Oh my goodness. What a rally. Unbelievable. Both of the players from Chinese Taipei on the floor at two different stages in that rally. <laughs> They're always good value, aren't they? Great pair to watch. They are so entertaining. Team 19 down. Run three straight points. Then 
lent themselves a game point opportunity. Yeah, and they haven't really been there no. in this second part of the first game. That's that's the real problem. They they've sort of Lee and Liu they've let them in. Now yeah. we don't know who's going to win this game here, but but it would be a steal if um, Yang Kuhan and Liu Qingyao wins it. Well, I think I said it's 16-14 that considering. Uh, Lee and Liu, the former world champions, have been 7-11 down at the mid-game interval. I thought they were cruising to I go 16-15 up. Yeah. yeah. 16-14 up, yeah. So game point opportunity to Lu Qingyao and Yang Po Han. Yang, ready? Black. Another dive from Liu Qing Yao. Are you okay? That is a terrific shot from Liu Yu Chen. In the case of um, Yang Puhan, the court attendant should have a little chair next to the court so she can move in real fast <laughs> because he's going to throw himself rally yeah. after rally we know that absolutely oh she's missed something mm, yeah she's missed a lot she has missed a lot this is no wonder the players are trying to scuff out the perspiration with their shoes but this shouldn't be allowed to happen really so when you see that, will that make you challenge more on the baseline? <laughs> so 20 all, extra points required. That's a clear two-point winning margin. Junhui is not letting a chance to point out to uh, Liu Yuchen that he should have left it. He doesn't let the chance pass. But I have to say, I think higher and higher of Liu Yuchen. I thought in the beginning of their partnership he was the weak link. I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. Yeah. I said exactly the same thing, I think, during the European leg of this tour. And then I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Second game point <laughs> opportunity. That was a shocking serve. But that position there, there is lethal when he gets those open smash opportunities, Lee Jun Hui. Service error, would you believe it? Service over. Twenty-two. Oh. Now, 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 now. Come 
Will it be third time lucky? Third game point opportunity for this unseeded combination from Chinese Taipei. Second game point opportunity. Jun Kui and Liu Yu Chen. He's broken the string of his racket, I think. Liu Ching Yao. But the former world champions convert on their second game point opportunity. 25-23, having saved three game points. 30 minutes for that opening game. On the edge were the number three seeds, Liu Jun Wei and One. Liu Yu Chen in that Love. opening game, having to save three game point opportunities before closing it out. 25-23. Maybe they'll relax a little Love. more now Love. and impose their dominance. Uh, for uh, Lu and um, Yang, but it's even more impossible here. <laughs> oh, um, lucky net call. Yeah. Oh, Looks like uh, Tong Shan Fu to the left. I'm not sure it is, but. Um, Oh, yes, it's all out attack. 
at the start of this second game from the former world champions. And they simply have to get the shuttle in, going in a downward direction, Lu and Yang because then there's a chance that, as with that last rally, their opponents will lift long. And if they do that a couple of times, then they will try to play flat, mm. and they can sort of like uh, be one step ahead of the, their opponent by knowing what they're trying to do, but only if they can get the attack. Shots shy of the longest so far, I think. Flat. Mm, it's landed in. There's quite a considerable difference in lengthways drift, I think. Steen? Yeah. but it uh, became a really, really good Eight, return. Two. Spirit has gone a little bit with um, the two players mm. from Chinese Taipei. It was a tough loss that first game when they came back and uh, had their opportunities. So to the mid-game interval. 11-2 the advantage to Liu Jinghui and Liu Yu Chen. Oh, didn't have a lot to say, did they? The Chinese coaches must be pretty happy. I'm sure they should be. The game in 11 2 up. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. 
Is there anything else that Lu Ching Yao and Yang Po Han should be trying, Steen? I, I just uh, feel that if it was me, I would try to target uh, Li Junhui because I feel he's a little bit more vulnerable if you can sort of get the upper hand against him there's there's a lot of uh, mistakes in him but uh, right now i think it's uh, more likely that he just plays really well and uh, excels mm. so uh, i don't see uh, the big opportunities for, for um, lu and yang Oh, my goodness. Yeah, take that. That's a fabulous smash. He really uses all his body. Reaching out there. Same attacking power, young Pohan, when he's at the back court. Lifted again there. <laughs> New Chen, that would have been a sign of uh, real confidence. Oi, that's a good shot. Yeah, he's hurt himself, you know, Steve. He seemed to stop Hu Ching Yao yeah. early stages of that rally. Yeah, it's just not moving. Look. Slowed to about zero miles an hour again. Reaching out. That's definitely something not right. Oh, 
far from the spirit okay. perhaps being broken. Right. shoulder was there the same I I didn't see what it was smash, yeah. yeah maybe it was just the length of the rally and they got tired in the end 41 shots well, they wouldn't stand a chance in a women's doubles <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an awful lot of men's doubles pairs that wouldn't stand <laughs> a chance in a women's doubles the length of the rallies Yeah. He's still smiling. <laughs> if you play tournaments in nine out of ten weeks, you might look forward to a day off tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Even though you want to win the match when you're in there. Two points away Six. from booking their place in the quarterfinal. Ready to challenge it. <laughs> so, match point. Match point nine. opportunities. A whole host of them for the former world champions. Yep. Only needed the one, so number three seeds, Li Jun Hui and Liu Yu Chen, come through a very tight opening game. Uh, very dominant in the second against Lu Jingyao and Yang Po Han. 25, 23, 21, 9, the second game. Here's the final rally. Match on by 48 minutes in total. Li Zun Hui and Liu Yuqian. 25, 23, 21, 9. So the umpire just confirms that scoreline. And Li Junhui and Liu Chen safely through to the quarterfinals. 